before we go, hey, hey Plumber, thank you for joining us. This is Justin Plumber, the promoter for the IWC. The IWC. I'm finally here in studio after being on the show, what? Two or three times now. A few, in a few months in, I, I haven't seen the like the gray hairs start just yet. Yeah, just after for what four shows, just you know, or men. anything like that. Nash so. Bars on there. <laughs> uh, so he'll be helping us, uh, uh, giving some insight here. Uh, maybe a little bit of this bracket insight here. Did you make these things? Did I make the bracket? Did you make the brackets? Did you? Did you? Are you the? Uh, is, is there post-it notes somewhere of all the names? There's a yeah. I have a screenshot of a napkin from Permani Brothers where the bracket was made. Is that that how it went down? Uh huh. Nice, nice. Yeah, that'll be posted. We, we prettied it up a little bit now for the website. That's good. Jesse worked, worked his magic on that napkin, and, and that's what you see on Facebook <laughs> I said, you see right this now. napkin? Make it pretty. He did it. Jesse's great. Jesse's the best at what he does. <laughs> best one. Best one. All right, but we got another one here, another participant in the super indie. He's been making waves over the last few months. I think, what, since December? Is, is that right? Is that when you January. Did? January? Yes. Okay. Uh, in the IWC, uh, he's Dylan Bostick joining us here on the show. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Haven't ate a carb since uh, yesterday morning, so I'm feeling a little, uh, a little tired. My brain's not really functioning, but you know, I'm here. Perfect, perfect time for an interview. We'll hit you with the hard hitting questions. That's what that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, well, first of all, uh, for 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 newbies on the show, we like to kind of get a little bra- background. So, uh, what uh, what was the first point uh, that you were kind of exposed to wrestling and, and kind of grasp onto it. Like what was your kind of earliest memory of that? Actually, uh, my mom dated an indie, indie wrestler in, uh, Shelbyville, Indiana. His name's blade. And, um, she took me to a show when I was eight years old. And after that, like I started going to the shows with him and I started tearing down and helping set up. And, uh, I think at the age of 12, I had my first uh, my first day of wrestling training. Oh, wow! <laughs> Wait, so did you did you just bypass WWE fandom completely? Do what? Did you just bypass WWE fandom completely and just go straight for the indies then? Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much how it started. That's awesome. Um, so, so how did you come up? So, so I guess training you just kind of uh, uh, did it all through uh, high school, or I guess middle high school. Uh, yeah, up through. Yeah, actually, um, my favorite wrestler was Stone Cold Steve Austin, this Blade guy. He kind of portrayed the attitude of Stone Cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I went to that indie show, that was kind of what connected with me. Um, So, you know, I really connected with him pretty well. And, like, you know, I was obsessed with wrestling. And all throughout high school, you know, I was training and traveling. And I actually had my first match when I was 15, which – this month it'll mark eight years in wrestling wow um but yeah even throughout all of high school like i was traveling the indies nice and i understand um uh, you're somebody that kind of uh, came into iwc with a bit of buzz i, I heard some people talking uh, about you because i'm like you know who is this guy i think I, I first saw you pop up with uh ray lynn over in rwa um and uh and, uh, and then heard you were popping up here in IWC and doing, done so much uh, there since. But uh, I heard you did some time in uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I was at OVW for about three years. Um, I trained with a hustler, Rip Rogers. Um, I worked I worked regularly, regularly on TV for about two years. Uh, my first year there, I didn't really do too much. I was just like on house shows and dark matches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but... But yeah, I had a lot of uh, a lot of good experiences at OVW. Good, good. I, I, I have to ask. Uh, I understand there's a Justin Bieber connection of some sort. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like there's literally um, thousands of Justin Bieber fans watching this right now. But it, it could be. It could very well be. Um, I, I envy your Twitter yeah. numbers for one thing. Uh, <laughs> so, Twitter envy. It's like the new uh, thing out there. It is a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's powerful on in the indies, right? So mm-hmm. Explain to us, like, what what is this this Bieber connection? Well, uh, whenever I was down at OVW, um, one night at a TV taping, the crowd started chanting Justin Bieber at me. And I was like, all right, well, if you guys want to call me Justin Bieber, I'll give you Justin Bieber. So, like, the next week, <laughs> I started coming out to Justin Bieber boyfriend. And, like, I started portraying Justin Bieber's character. So... Anyway, like, I, I started, like, following him on Twitter, 
And then like I know I'm like, dang, this dude has a lot of followers and I didn't even know, but he was the most followed person in the world on Twitter. So I'm like, dang, if I could have his followers, that'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. So like I started following like people that were like active on his accounts just because, you know, dedicated loyal fans like that, that's what it's all about. So I can make them dedicated loyal fans for me, then that's a perfect, you know, a perfect plan. Well, I followed his uh, brother and sister's mom, and she actually followed me back. And actually, she has a picture on her Instagram in my uh, Who Sucks Now t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees. And then um, the whole Justin Bieber thing kind of got a little bit of a buzz, and now he follows me because of it. So I literally gain hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of believers every day that follow me on Twitter. It's amazing. <laughs> just just looking at the count here and... Uh... Uh, you are at uh, let's see your your followers. You have one hundred and eighty nine thousand thousand followers, <laughs> which are also hopefully one hundred eighty nine thousand DVD and digital download buyers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> at IWCWrestling.com. That's the that's the that's the thing. We got to turn these followers into money. That's what I keep telling you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Money. So so are you? Uh, does that make you Justin Bieber's favorite wrestler? Uh, I don't know, man. Like this whole thing with Seth Rollins right now, I don't know. Yeah, what do you think? Of, what do you think about that? Because that's popped up the last few weeks. I don't even know why that even uh, happens. I, I I think Vince McMahon just discovered who Justin Bieber is. Yeah, um, I think it was kind of funny that four days after I send them a, a tough enough video that they start using the Justin Bieber thing, and then um, a couple other guys use the Who Sucks Now thing on SmackDown. I think that's pretty interesting. And I'm not going to take away from Dylan's airtime, but I think in, in previous conversations we've had, this is now the third time where something like this has happened with one of our guys. Yeah. Where it's just, uh, it, there's nothing you can do about it, but it's just a killer because it's like, take the guy, don't take the idea. Yeah, yeah. Because where yeah. the idea generates, this is the guy that's going to do it best. You can't, you can't, you know, put lipstick on a pig. Not yeah. to get political. But and, you know and, what I mean? see, and it seems, it, it not, not even just because of a, a Dylan's thing, it seems so awkward, you know? <laughs> Like when, like when they said that, like, 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 uh, 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 uh Daniel Bryan was a turd one week, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just like, why are we, what, uh, I guess the kids will chant it. I, I, I sure, you know, but anyways, um, <laughs> from that mentioning, uh, 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 tough enough, uh, uh there's, a, there's something definitely where social media is coming in handy, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my uh, YouTube video got over 81,000 views, which is pretty good. Please, please tell me you're monetized that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I didn't know how to do that until after it hit 81,000 oh, views. Oh, no. And, yeah. Let's leave yeah, money on no. the table. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. It's confusing. Yep. It took me forever to figure out how to do that. And then even once I did, I still don't know how to get the actual money. I get mad when I get 400 yeah. views and forgot to check the box. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, how we're, that's how we're running over here at the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, but I know, and even you popped on TV. Uh, you know, how, How's that support been? Uh, how, will we be, will be seeing you on TV here in a month? You know, anything's possible, but I will tell you this right now. I've had zero, zero contact with WWE. Oh, so no. I don't think it's going to happen, but, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Anything's possible. Never say no. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, from there, like I say, you've been in IWC for a few months now um, with, um, I, and I've really kind of uh, uh, been a big fan. We're, we're big fans of Keith Hodd here on the show. He's been on the show for a while. He's been actually on our video game show as well. Um, and uh, you've been in a pretty uh, heavy feud with him here. Uh, but uh, I've always been impressed because, you know, on paper, this is something that I would have seen as kind of an undercard for, for an IWC show and be like, yeah, you know, it's probably forgettable we'll move on but it, it, you guys have really kind of made something special here uh with you and hot and Raylan involved yeah you know um i really i really enjoyed the matches with uh keith Tot just because you know i got to pick on him and mm-hmm. you know people really got into that um throwing the hot dogs at him you know those are the things that people are going to remember i could have went out there and did all the sweet moves possible and nobody would care but Mm-hmm. You know, people are going to remember that I was a bully and I threw hot dogs on Keith Hot. Speaking of those hot dogs, I, I, I think I informed you there at Meadville that uh, both times you brought hot dogs out, Tommy Dreamer has found them later in the night. 
and ate one. Yeah, once. that's disgusting. <laughs> he ate one in January, I think, right? He ate one in January, and he did a Meadville as well. Okay. And I know, like my guy was at ringside stepping on them and there smearing them into the ground. Starving in China right now, <laughs> I guess Michael. So. And we were debating on whether he had the cupcake as well that, he's, that 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 you guys were using. Yeah, I'm starving right now. All this talk about food, man. I haven't had a car since yesterday. Killing me right now. <laughs> so what is it about uh, uh, IWC uh, that you've been having fun with uh, uh, so far? Do what? Uh, what is it about IWC you've been having fun with so far? I just love the atmosphere, man. It's it's uh, top to bottom a real professional company. It's not like going to another indie show, you know? I actually get excited about coming to IWC because there's a lot of good talent, you know, everything's ran professionally, you know, it's a place that I can, you know, use as a platform to make a name for myself. Um, everything about it, man, is just, just true professionals. Awesome. See, that things have really turned around in, uh, since December, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> There you go. No, uh, that's uh, that's good to hear. Uh, that's kind of a loaded question because he knows I'm sitting here with these headphones on. So. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Dylan was one of you notice the roster's very different now than it was mm-hmm. uh, in December even, mm-hmm. and part of that maybe was a little bit rushed on my part. But um, Dylan's one of the good that came out of that. I reached out and I tried to really bring in um, some new faces, some new personalities. And love him or hate him, uh, Dylan Bostick's an entertainer, and he's done exactly that so far. And that's why he's earned his spot in a Super Indy qualifier. And no matter how he did it, he won. He's in the tournament, and, and, mm-hmm. and, he, and he earned that spot. So guys like him and, and Alex Daniels, Crimson, these are all guys that I wanted to bring in to bring a new identity to IWC. And um, I've been criticized for, for turning over the roster too quickly. But guys like that make me proud of my decision and make me stand by my decision to do that and to change things up, uh, to even improve them, I'd like to say, going forward. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we, Thank you. We, Thank you. Well, you have anything to speak to that? I, I mean, I just really appreciate, you know, Plummer bringing me into IWC and giving me an opportunity, you know, because um, he didn't have to change everything that quickly and, you know, he could have just made it the same as it always was, but, you know, you know he stuck his neck out on the line for me and, and brought me in and gave me a chance. We had a little bit of feedback here from our friend Alex Cars, who's out in, uh, I believe, uh, around Long Beach, California. Uh, he says, uh, no, actually, Seth Rollins aspires to be Dylan Bostic. So, putting that out there you know, for you. He, he might have a point. You might. <laughs> <laughs> He's growing out that blonde streak, though. I, I think that's going away soon. So Yeah, he needs, he needs to cut his hair. You know, like me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's a common, that's a common phrase goes around, uh, uh, WWE training. I, I understand to cut your hair. So anyways, um, so going into it, uh, super indie here coming up. Uh, we just talked, got off, uh, the line with, uh, Ray Rowe, who's been, you know, of course, making waves down there in Texas, killing it. Uh, uh, Eamon here just witnessed that with inspire pro here over the weekend. Uh, well, what, well, first of all, he's one of your potential, uh, uh, uh combatants you could see. Uh, coming up in Super India, uh, um, uh, how do you, how do you feel about him as a possibility for an opponent across the ring? Do you have enough cupcakes? You know, you know, I see, I see the bracket, and uh, if it works out, you know, it might end up coming down to me and him in the final. And that would really be a good opportunity for me because you know he's a big name in Ring of Honor. Now, if I can knock him off, maybe maybe I'll get a shot in Ring of Honor or something. But uh, you know, I'm just gonna take it match it. Match by match, you know, and just see where see where it leads me. First, I got Hintai, and he he won two Super Indie tournaments, so I got a big a big match right off the bat. Of course. So, what, what do you think? Who else is uh, really sticking out to you that you would like to see, uh, perhaps one on one or or in the three way finale uh, there at Super Indie with you? Uh, man, there's a, the, like top to bottom. It's just a lot of good talent. Um, of course, I, if I beat Hentai, then it looks like um, fresh Andrew Palace. Coming yeah, in. fresh Andrew. That's Palace. That's actually an interesting yeah. bracket because you look at yeah. it, you can if break I, it down into three, and I'm, he's got the current Hentai, champion. Then I get the wrestle. Sorry. Then I get the I get the wrestle Andrew Palace, and he's the super indie champion. So if I can knock him off, you know that'll keep you know making me look better and better. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, sorry, Plumber, you're saying? No, I'm just, I, I don't know if you could pull up. I know not everyone's watching, but uh, the bracket there. But it, it's hard. You can, you can almost segment it into three different brackets. Three mm -hmm. men are going to go into that final match. Mm -hmm. And as always, the Super Indy Champion has a bye. You could argue that that bottom bracket may be the most difficult. Uh, they may not be the biggest names currently, but it may be the most difficult. You have your reigning champion who's going to be fresh in that second round. Mm -hmm. And then you have Dylan. And, who, and, 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 and Powell's putting up great matches against guys like DJ Z. He's been on fire. Yeah. 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 Beat yeah. Matt, Matt Striker. Striker he beat year. Matt Striker last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Dylan will be, uh, you know, faced first off with a guy that, that won two Super Indies. And I was actually just with Hentai tonight mm -hmm. talking a little bit. I know he's fired up. I tried to talk him into coming out. But he has some business to take care of, and he didn't want to roam around in strangers' backyards. But uh, yeah. Oh, uh, he's been down here a couple <laughs> times. He's very familiar with uh, roaming around in my strangers' backyards. So he would have gotten here quicker. Yeah, he would have. He'd be like, "No, go first. We go to the neighbors, do a thing, and then we come over here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, uh, Bostic uh, would have to go through guys with experience in the Super Indy division. Right. So while the names aren't there, I know a lot of people are looking in the in that middle bracket with uh, Trevor Lee. Uh, and uh, Everett. Andrew Everett, mm -hmm. the, you know, the top bracket's got Ray Rowe, which everybody's horrified mm -hmm. oh, of. Yeah, Cedric Alexander yeah, the up there. top two are, are two ROH guys. So. But none of those guys have super indie experience. All that experience right, right. is down in that bottom bracket. So it's going to be interesting to see. Will the experience play out? Will the, will the speed will the speed play out? Will the high flyers come out on top? And then we got some bigger guys in there this year, too. So we got mm -hmm. a, a mix, a whole mix of styles this year in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. And, and this, is this the biggest bracket? I tried to make it that, and it's not. <laughs> I didn't do my research. Norm Connors ran a two-day, he's out of his mind, 12-man Super Indy tournament. Yes. So I expanded the field this year uh, to make it 11. Mm -hmm. I never liked the 10. I never saw any reason to give anyone other than the champion a first-round buy. Why would you do that? Um, so I expanded it by one this year, thinking it would be the biggest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Joe Dombrowski is always checking the stats. It is not the biggest, but it's the second biggest of all time. <laughs> and most certainly the toughest. Because, God forbid, we do a two-day tournament again. Because <laughs> yeah. those, those always worked out so well. At least we got Necro Butcher in that one. But not in Super Indy, thankfully. Or maybe. I don't know. Could you imagine Super, Necro Butcher the Super Indy champion? I could imagine. Mean, RJ City just held the thing for, what, eight months, That's nine true. months. That's <laughs> true. That, that kind of changed the whole. And it, it, RJ's another guy, not to get off topic. 10 seconds or less here. Another guy that didn't fit the super indie mold. And I like that. I don't like him uh, professionally or personally, but he, he, he breaks the mold of the super indie title. He's not your mm -hmm. uh, luchador. And that title actually main evented more shows in the world title last year. That's what makes this tournament so important because the super indie championship is almost, if not, you could say it's on par with the IWC heavyweight championship. Mm -hmm. right now. I can, you could probably say that more people <laughs> held the, that are popular have gone on have held the super indie title maybe than the heavyweight oh for sure absolutely absolutely if you're looking at who's held a title and then from there used it as a launching pad to go to the next level mm -hmm. ring of honor wwe ecw wcw um you can just go into iwcwrestling.com look at the title history tab um, you'll see a ton of huge names in there a ton certainly certainly is that what's that dylan you saying something yeah, I was going to say, actually, I was doing my research um, yesterday, and I was looking at all the past champions and stuff, and I noticed that the Super Indy title, I would say, is more prestigious. Yeah, a lot of people think that. It's 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 all it, it's all in how you perceive it. Uh, uh, the Super Indy title has, I don't know if you want to say made stars, but you could say stars have used the Super Indy title to help achieve their success along their way to the top. Mm -hmm. And that's what hopefully we're going to continue the tradition with uh, whichever of these 11 men. And it's not even necessarily the winners of Super Indy. It's participants. We've had guys go out in the first round. We've had guys at Super Indy that weren't in the tournament that just had to be part of, happened to be part of the event. I know my first Super Indy, um, my first backstage interview now that Brittany Baker does was with Cesaro. Uh, I mean, this is, and then I, who else was in that one? Uh, uh, El Generico was in that Super Indy. Uh, mm -hmm. you, I, I, I don't have anything in front of me here, but but it's it, it has been a breeding ground for future television stars. Certainly, certainly. And it will be again this year. I mean, and that's the thing about it. If you want to see these guys before you have to pay $300 a, a seat to sit in the front row to see them, 
Super Indy is the place to come because in two years, three years, if you look at that bracket, I, I, I guarantee you at least at least one or two of those names is going to be on your television mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Uh, I promise that. Point out, you mentioned El Generico, who resembles somebody in uh, NXT right now. Right. Uh, he, he's the first round match. He was taking on a guy that was in the Elimination Chamber in uh, now known as Callisto. Yeah. Samurai, then, then right. Samurai Del Sol. Uh, that I mean, I, I love I love watching WWE and say, "Yep, that's one of our IWC guys. That's one of our IWC guys. Yep, that's all him. Yep." And guy. ninety percent of the time, and, it stems from Super Indie. It stems right, from that. Right. It stems from this tournament that's going to happen. And in even two weeks. even lately, you know, we're talking with you know Dylan. We mentioned your your tough enough spot, but how many people I love watching my TV on Raw, and how many of the guys we're working with now with IWC especially. I don't see a lot of people from other groups even kind of extensionally. You yeah, know, around. I, I like, think like, just like, about all of our guys have made it on either SmackDown, Raw, mm -hmm. whatever, the front page of the website. I've seen, I think we have four, four or five guys uh, mm -hmm. that have applied and they've all been, they've all been featured. So we're doing something right here. In That's Pittsburgh. right. All right, Dylan, uh, anything else about Super Indy uh, going into this? Uh, uh, anything else you, anything else you want to say about what's coming up with that show? Are, are there any food items going to be involved? Anything planned? Can can, well, can, uh, you know, you, you're talking about all the different styles, and there's a lot of big guys and, mm -hmm. and high flyers and all these different styles. You know, my mindset is, you know, going into each match, I'm going to do my style, and that's, you know, play mind games. I'll take my time, and I'll do whatever I've got to do to win the match. You know, these guys are going to be worried about getting all their things in and, like, making sure the crowd loves them, but I don't really care. All I care about is winning. That's right. That's right. Uh, so uh, let's let's end us off with a couple of questions here uh, that we usually put out there. We just uh, uh, put them out to Ray Rowe. First of all, what are you watching as far as wrestling these days? Uh, you know, I like to do a lot of research, uh, like Macho Man, Randy Savage, um, a lot of Hustler, Rip Rogers matches, you know, since he trained me. Um, I watch a lot of old stuff. I don't really watch too much new stuff. Okay, and uh, what's the best and worst? You've been here. Uh, you said mentioned you've been around for eight years. Uh, what's the best and worst of indie wrestling so far for you? Um, the best part about it is all the stories, all the people that I meet, and like all the the situations that I go in. And some of them might not be so fun at the time, but later on, I get to laugh about it. You know, a lot of stories and and just all the people that I've met. Um, the worst part about it is though, I feel like indie wrestlers don't get the respect they deserve kind of uh you know how how rose said earlier you know there's all these guys that say they're wrestlers and act like they're wrestlers and think they're wrestlers but they're not mm -hmm. you know and and i think i think people get that stuck in their mind because they go to a bad show once and then they have a bad taste about independent wrestling mm -hmm. and then they never want to go again but then you know there's guys on top too that really didn't earn a spot and shouldn't be there and I feel like there's so much talent on the indies that indies should have more respect than they really do. I would say that that's probably the worst thing about it. All right. So if anybody wants to, well, first of all, everybody go to uh, Super Indie, IWCWrestling.com, June 13th coming up here. If you're not in the area, it'll be on DVD, digital download through PittsburghWrestling.com and the soon to be relaunched indie wrestling .us. Uh, but uh, where can people find you and perhaps become one of the uh, 180,000 plus followers of your Twitter account? Well, um, actually, my website, PlatinumWorldTour.com, there's a, a social media page on there where you can find all my social media pages. Um, but my Twitter is my main social media source, obviously. Um, and it's at Dylan underscore Bostic. And also, if you're on my website, make sure you go to ProWrestlingTees.com and, and buy my shirts. That's right. Throw a, throw a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt in there while you're at it, if you could. Uh, but uh, and all, and a, lot of, and a lot of friends, a lot of familiar faces actually popped up on there. But uh, hit up Dylan for sure. Uh, and that's uh, PlatinumWorldTour.com. Not too many uh, uh, indie wrestlers have their own website these days. Yeah, man. Uh, actually, that was another thing that I did this year uh, to stand out. Um, did a really professional photo shoot. Um, had a professional web designer do my website, and actually tomorrow morning I have another photo shoot uh, for some new new things that are going to be going up onto the website. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Thanks a lot, Dylan Bostic. Check him out in the tournament. Check him out online. 
and uh, and vote for him on Tough Enough. Go go hit play on that video on Tough Enough and show him uh, uh, to maybe consider him for the show. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna Thanks, hold guys. there. Thanks a lot, man.